Hello, and welcome to the February installment of Construction Junction, presented to you by MSU Infrastructure Planning and Facilities. If you have any comments or questions concerning this presentation, or have suggestions on how we might improve, please let us know via the feedback box on the Construction Junction webpage located at the address on the screen. We thank you in advance for helping us improve your experience. The agenda for the February presentation will begin with updates on which projects are going to the next two Board of Trustees meetings. Next, we will have overview of the campus snow plan. There will then be new project presentations on the alterations in the Veterinary Medical Center, the planned South End Zone addition at Spartan Stadium, and the alterations to the first and second floors of Bessie Hall. We will then have project updates on 1855 Place and the Breslin Student Event Center facility upgrades. Beginning with the February BOT meeting, the projects going to the board will be, for Step 2, Authorization to Proceed, Permanent Field Lighting at Spartan Stadium, Replacement of the Ralph Young Track Field Hockey Surface, Alterations to Room E100 in the Veterinary Medical Center, Bessie Hall Alterations, and South End Zone Addition at Spartan Stadium. And for Step 3, Bid and Contract Award, Food Processing and Innovation Center, and IM West Pool and Locker Room HVAC Systems Replacement. Moving on to the April BOT meeting, the projects going to the board will be for Step 2, Authorization to Proceed, Engineering Research Complex Addition and Renovation, and for Step 3, Bid and Contract Award, Parking Lot 92 Expansion and Reconstruction, Wharton Center Roof Replacement, and Trowbridge Road Repaving. We begin this month's presentation with an overview of the campus snow plan. We all know that Michigan winters can be unpredictable, and so when conditions warrant, we ask that you practice good snow safety by giving yourself extra time to travel to work, driving carefully, dressing warmly, wearing sensible shoes with good traction, being extra aware of where you are walking and the condition of your path, shortening the length of your stride, and remembering to check the forecast before heading outside. For your safety, please remember to not dart out in front of or behind snow removal equipment. It is large, loud, and difficult to stop quickly and make eye contact with snow removal equipment operators before crossing in front of them. The university uses a combination of brine and ice melt compound to combat icy conditions. Brine solution works by preventing adhesion of snow to hard surfaces, while ice melt is used on ice that has already formed. Often both are used in combination to speed the time it takes for the melting compound to take effect. If you see any icy spots on campus, please call the campus operators at 353-1760 to report. Please remember that it does take time for ice melt compound to take effect. Here you can see the effect that preventative brining has on the ability of crews to cleanly remove snow and ice. The areas that were brined kept snow and ice from sticking to them, thus allowing complete removal, unlike the areas that were not brined, which still retained some snow and ice even after snow removal equipment has passed. Again, an example of the preventative effect of brining ahead of a snow event. We ask that the campus community partner with IPF crews to help ensure everyone's safety by applying ice melt compound to areas outside building entrances if they see slick spots. This helps avoid incidents until our crews have had a chance to clear the area. There are marked buckets of ice melt compound available at all entrances for this purpose. However, we also ask that you please be judicious with your use of ice melt compound in order to minimize the environmental impacts. Please do not park so close to sidewalks that your vehicle's bumper hangs over it. This makes clearing the sidewalk with our motorized equipment impossible. We also ask that you avoid parking in sections of lots that have not yet been cleared, either parking in already cleared areas or waiting for our crews to finish clearing the lot before parking. We remind everyone that parking is prohibited in residence hall loops from 2 to 6 a.m. Our crews have a formidable task ahead of them after a snow event and keeping these areas free from vehicles helps removal efforts go more smoothly and quickly. Again, if you see icy or dangerous spots on campus, please call the campus operator at 353-1760. If you're not able to call, you can also tweet us at MSU Facilities. For more information about MSU snow removal plans, visit ipf.msu.edu. There you can find information on snow and ice removal services, as well as our environmentally green efforts. You can also email any feedback, suggestions, or comments to snowplan at ipf.msu.edu. We thank you for helping us keep MSU safe during the upcoming winter season. 
Moving on to new projects, we began with a project to alter room E100 in the Veterinary Medical Center. The Veterinary Medical Center is located in the Central Academic District at the corner of Wilson Road and Bogue Street. This project is necessary to provide updated facilities and technology to support teaching, learning, and the success of our students. These renovations will create high-impact educational environments that will engage students in active learning, provide opportunities for research and leadership in instructional methods, and foster innovation through tech-rich environments. The scope of this project will include comprehensive renovation of the Lecture Hall E100 to include new ceilings, lighting, flooring, paint, marker boards, technology, and furniture. Renovation of the adjacent corridor to provide student seating, collaboration space, and informational learning opportunities, which will include new ceiling, lighting, paint, electrical, and furniture, and the addition of a single-use, gender-neutral restroom and quiet study and testing space. Impacts to the campus community will include increased construction traffic along the west side of the building and noise and dust typical of a demolition project. The project is scheduled to begin in early May and will be ready for use in mid-August. The floor plan of the renovated area shows the new space created to relocate vending machines out of the corridor and provide accessible drinking fountains, the new gender-neutral single-use restroom, new study space, bench seating, and accessible student desk spaces. At the same time as this project is being completed, there are several projects occurring which will update the HVAC systems in the classroom as well as improve the existing men's and women's restroom areas. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you'll find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the Veterinary Medical Center Room E100 renovation project can be directed to the construction representative, Ken Gottschalk. Next, we have a project to create an addition at the south end zone of Spartan Stadium. Spartan Stadium is located in the Athletic and Recreation District. This project is necessary as the south end of the stadium is currently lacking in fan amenities, including limited concessions and no restrooms. Fans must use facilities in the east and west sides of the stadium, which are inconvenient and create increased congestion in those areas. In addition, the Department of Homeland Security has recommended that changes be made at the entry gates at the stadium to improve security. The goals of this project include creating a simplified addition focused on providing restrooms and capacity for added concessions, which can be easily incorporated into future expansions at the south end. Renovation of gates and donor plazas similar to those at the north end zone, and maintenance of the existing parking count at adjacent lot 79. The scope of the project will include construction of an approximately 19,000 square foot single story structure, which will include creation of approximately 236 bathroom fixtures and four concession stand areas. Movement of the ticket gates out from the stadium structure to meet Department of Homeland Security recommendations. Modification of parking lot 79, which will include extension to the west and conversion to pay per spaces, while maintaining the existing parking capacity and maintaining the main pedestrian pathway between the track and field bleachers and the parking lot. Impacts to the campus community will include partial and full closure of parking lot 79 during different stages of construction. Construction will also involve coordination with other projects occurring concurrently at the stadium area as well as with other campus events occurring during the construction time period. Construction is scheduled to begin this month and will finish up near the end of August. Here you see an aerial view rendering of the south end of the stadium showing the new addition. A rendering of the addition from the south looking northwest and a rendering looking northeast showing the new gate areas. The floor plan of the new addition shows the new restroom areas in green, the concession areas in purple, new gender neutral and family restrooms in orange, and mechanical areas in blue. Gray shading indicates those areas of the addition that will be accessible during pre-game periods. If you would like further information about this or any other project, 
visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the South End Zone project can be directed to the design representative, Scott Gardner. We next have an overview of the Bessie Hall first and second floor renovations project. Bessie Hall is located in the North Academic District off Farm Lane. This project is necessary as the last major renovations at this facility occurred in 2014. Renewed investments in these instructional areas is necessary to provide improved facilities and technology that support teaching, learning, and student success. These renovations will create high-impact educational environments that will engage students in active learning, provide opportunities for research and leadership in instructional methods, and foster innovation through tech-rich environments. The scope of this project will include comprehensive renovation of first and second floor instructional space, including 11 classrooms and one lecture hall, to include new ceilings, lighting, flooring, paint, marker boards, window treatments, technology, and furniture. Renovation of the adjacent corridor to provide student seating, collaboration space, and informal learning opportunities, which will include new ceiling, lighting, paint, electrical, and furniture, and the addition of a single-use restroom and quiet study and testing space. Impacts to the campus community will be limited and will be coordinated with building occupants during construction. Construction is scheduled to begin in early May and will be completed by mid-August. Here you see the first floor plan showing the areas of renovation in green. And here we have the second floor plan also showing renovated areas in green. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the Bessie Hall renovation project can be directed to the construction representative, Matt Postma. We next have an update on the 1855 Place project. This project is located in the Northwest Residential Mixed-Use Districts at the former site of the Michigan State Police Post. The goals of this project include creating living environments that support both single student and student families around the resources they need to be academically successful, creating an institutional asset to further our world-class land-grant mission, consolidating office spaces from across campus, freeing up space for academic programs while saving resources and improving communications, and creating synergies between residential and hospitality services and intercollegiate athletics. The scope of this project will include a 102,000 square foot mixed-use office building that will be LEED Silver certified, which will include RHS offices, intercollegiate athletic offices, as well as retail space, creation of 438,000 square feet of student apartments, both single student apartments as well as family housing apartments, creation of 2,075 parking spaces, including a parking deck, to accommodate students, staff, and campus events. Funding sources for this project will come from auxiliary funds, from RHS, intercollegiate athletics, and parking fees. Construction on this project commenced in the summer of 2015. The new parking ramp opened in April of last year. The family housing units were ready for occupancy in August of last year. The single student units are expected to be open sometime in August of this year, as well as the various retail spaces in the new mixed-use tower. The office tower, Hall of Champions, and the housing assignment office should be ready for occupancy sometime in October of this year. The site as it existed prior to the start of construction shows the location of University Village which will remain after construction is complete, the location of event parking, which has been relocated to the south, as well as the three structures that have been demolished or relocated. The site redevelopment will include building of new family housing, single student apartments, retail and office space, and a new parking deck and surface lot. This project is being completed in two phases in order to minimize disruptions and to maintain event parking availability during the entirety of the project. Phase one included demolition of the existing police post buildings and the theater department scene shop. Phase one also included the construction of a parking ramp and surface lot, as well as the construction of three family housing units. During phase one construction, a temporary construction access road was installed to the west of the site. 
Phase two of the project includes construction of the single student apartment buildings, as well as the office and retail towers. During this phase, event parking has been moved to the newly constructed parking deck and surface lot. Here you see an aerial view rendering of the project showing the location of the new parking ramp, the office and retail towers, single student apartment buildings, the existing University Village structures, and the new family housing units. Here you see the address and building name assignments for this project. Please note that the address of the Communications Storage University Building is changing from 1165 Garden City Road to 1159 Pine Tree Court. The address of the parking booth for Lot 63 is also changing from 721 South Harrison Road to 675 South Harrison Road. Here is a view of the proposed office tower showing the intercollegiate athletic space on the top floor. Here is a view of the proposed mixed-use tower from the corner of Harrison and Kalamazoo. Installation of exterior sheathing on the mixed-use tower continues, as well as installation of exterior glass panels. Framing of the interior office spaces progresses, as well as pouring of the flooring slab on the first floor. Framing work continues in the single student apartment units, and here you see exterior sheathing work on the single student housing unit end caps. For those of you who would like to follow the progress of construction on this project, please check out the live webcam site at the address on the screen. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the 1855 Place project can be directed to the project representative, Andy Linebaugh. Lastly, we have an update on the work that is being done as part of the Breslin Student Event Center Facility Upgrades Project. The Breslin Center is located in the Athletic and Recreation District. The university is undertaking this project in order to enhance the student, alumni, fan, and public experience by improving the functionality of the event center to create a lasting legacy by integrating a sense of Spartan tradition throughout the facility, and to extend the useful life of the building by improving services to the fans and implementing major maintenance items. The project is being divided into two phases, facility upgrades and athletics addition. The phases are being designed in a way that minimizes rework and are being fully coordinated throughout their design and construction. Phase one included a 22,000 square foot addition around the building, an expanded concourse, renovation and upgrading of the restroom facilities, renovation of concession stands, improvements to the entry vestibules to the main concourse, improvements to finish levels and experience on the concourse, improvements to site conditions for ingress and egress, improvements to site security, replacement of the chiller system, and connection to the East Lansing water system. Phase two includes a 30,000 square foot addition, which will create a sense of main entry and destination into the building and includes a basketball hall of history. Construction on this project began in January of 2016 and is expected to be completed by this August. Here you see the proposed floor plan of the completed facility upgrades showing the expansion of the concourse areas, the new restroom and concession areas, and the new hall of history. As part of the Breslin upgrade, there will also be changes to the area surrounding the center. A new plaza outside the hall of history is planned with the Magic Johnson statue being slightly relocated to accommodate the new addition. There will also be improvements to adjacent parking and loading areas, as well as a new crosswalk across Harrison Road to the newly constructed parking ramp. Here is a graphic showing the work that is ongoing from the period of last October to March of this year, highlighting the areas of the work site that are still in construction, as well as the areas that are completed and in operation. Work continues at the Southwest Addition as well as on the Hall of History edition. Here you see an example of some of the work that is progressing on the Hall of History interior, and another view of the interior work on the Hall. Work in the lower level strength and conditioning room continues. Here you see an artist rendering of the Hall of History Plaza, which will include the relocated Magic Johnson statue. For those of you who would like to follow the progress of construction on this project, please check out the live webcam site at the address on the screen. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the Breslin Center Facility Upgrades Project can be directed to the construction representative, Jason Van Zee. 
This concludes the February Construction Junction presentation. We encourage you to visit the Infrastructure Planning and Facilities website at www.ipf.msu.edu. There you will find information on construction and maintenance alerts, detour information, construction junction information, project, and contact information. There are also a number of other IPF resources available, including listservs that you can subscribe to to keep up to date with various IPF projects and events. Stay connected with IPF via social media. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Watch our videos on YouTube. And follow us on Instagram. Construction Junction presentations will be made available on the CJ website beginning of the 7th of each month. We thank you for taking the time to check us out, and we hope you'll visit again.